be great. Hi, I'm Tom, and welcome to another video. I know that a lot of people are hoping for more Nintendo stuff on this channel, and rest assured, I am working on that uh, right now. Right now? Right this second. I'm working on Nintendo, literally right now. What, I'm doing it on my cell phone. Uh, but this is a video uh, not about Nintendo. This is a video about wordplay, which is another one of my hobbies. Uh, it's short and interesting, I hope. So let's do it. Okay, class. Today's lesson. Portmanteau. Now you probably already know some portmanteaus. Here's a really good one. Programmer. That's brother, or maybe brother, and programmer. Oh, let's make that colored. Right, so that row part is kind of shared between the two. Another one is chillax. So the important thing here is we have some overlap between the one word and the other. And these are sound-based overlaps. Uh, we can also generalize a portmanteau, so it doesn't need to be two words. Uh, we could have a portmanteau. Portmanteau is like a three-word portmanteau. So we've got, for example, brother plus programmer plus mermaid is programmer made or anachalaxis, which maybe is like, you just really like your nut allergies, so you're just kicking back on the couch, popping some uh, nuts there. Okay, but why stop at three when we could have a portman two, oops, which is French for all, which is where we try to put all of the words, every English word, into one word, right? Sounds great, so that's what this talks about. Okay, so in order to do this with computers, we're not gonna be worried about the sounds of words. We're only gonna be worried about the way they're spelled. So these will be purely lexical portmanteaus. So a word like programmer is not okay because uh, we had to leave out the P. Welcome to our ool. But we will allow something like, like sweatshop scotch, which is a portmanteau of sweatshop or sweatshops and hopscotch because of this overlap here. And we didn't lose any letters. That's gonna be really important. Now also, uh, Note that sweatshop on its own would not be a portmanteau of sweat and shop, but it would be okay if it was sweats and shop. Okay, so there actually has to be an overlap. They can't just abut one another. So to do that, we want to think about this problem abstractly. So we're going to have a bunch of words. I'll draw a word as a circle, and the word in there is the word chair. And then all of the words that could come right after it in our huge portmanteau. So anything that starts with an R is going to be in there. Like we could have relax, airplane, hairspray, ire, I-R-E. So that could also lead to next relax, right? So we could have chair relax or chair relax and so on. And so you're going to have to build this graph up for the whole uh, language. And then we're going to string together a path through this graph. I might have chair, airplane, anesthesia, which would be chair plane anesthesia, which actually sounds like a good name for my startup idea, where when you go on a long flight, they just put you under general anesthesia so you don't have to listen to any of those babies crying. Oh, yeah, that's gold. So what a good slogan. Copyright time. Actually, you know what? Please take this idea. Please implement it, because I don't want to listen to babies. Now, there is one problem with this, which is that this graph is really big and really complicated. So of course, ear has to go back there. And you know, this is only, what, seven words. Uh, but there's, you know, a lot more words. In fact, there's about 100,000 words in uh, our dictionary. I managed to draw 224 words there before my hand fell off. And so the real dictionary is about 470 times bigger than even this picture. And in fact, this picture is nowhere near as complicated as the real language because uh, some word experts, some PhDs, told me that almost every word begins and ends with a letter. So on average, there's going to be about 4,000 lines into and out of every word just for, the, just for the letter that begins and ends it. And that's not even counting the two or three or more letter suffixes and prefixes of words. I made a computer program to draw this graph for all of English, but even if you look at just prefixes and suffixes of five or more letters, the graph is incredibly dense. In this animation, I'm moving the words around so that the lines between them are shorter and so that you can see some of the structure. But it's rather a mess, and I don't know if you get much out of this visualization. I tried. And even worse than just being a really big graph, the problem that we have, which is to visit every word 
once, or at least once, uh, is a known hard problem. It's actually very similar to the traveling salesman problem, where we have some cities with roads between them of a certain distance, and the traveling salesman is supposed to visit each city exactly once. And this is a problem that is in the class we know as NP-complete, which suffice to say just means it's hard, in general. Luckily for English, we can kind of just blaze ahead and get an okay result. So to blaze ahead, I just pick any arbitrary word, and I pick portmanteau, it just seems like the right thing to do. And then I have this graph which has the words that might follow portmanteau. So I pick the one with the longest suffix, the longest shared suffix. In this case, I can only get these two letters, AU, auxiliary. And I do the same thing again, arrhythmia, miasma, and so on. And as I do that, of course, I'm building up a long portmanteau. The problem is that I'll eventually get stuck. And I get stuck because, for example, there are a lot more words that end with Y than begin with Y. So either I have to keep reusing words in order to get new words that start with Y, and of course there's lots of other letters that have this problem, um, or I have to stop. So I just pick another random word here, stature, then resurrectionist, Istanbul, bulleting, and so on and so forth until I get stuck. As I do that, I might cover a word like bullet and bulletin sort of for free by other words, and that's fine. I'll check those off my list as well. And I just keep doing this over and over and over again. Here's another impossible to understand visualization so you can see what this kind of looks like. Each dot is a word and every different color is a portmanteau that we put together using the procedure in the last part. And the gray dots are words that we covered sort of for free, like bulletin. Eventually we fill up the entire grid, even if we have to use portmanteaus that are just a single word for some really hard leftover words. So now we're almost done. We have a bunch of these portmanteaus. There's like 10,000 of them. In fact, some of them are just a single word, like pertussis here. And we've used every single English word, but they're not connected together. So if we could just put them together, then we'd have a portmanteau of all of the words in English. So now the idea is just use some words again in order to make these connections. So to connect these two, I just need a word that starts with D and ends with C, like disk. But what if we needed to connect two words like tangent and quiz? There isn't a word that starts with T and ends with Q. But we can do it with two words, like to peer and Iraq. So basically, we just need to make a strategy for getting from one letter to any other letter, and we can use as many words as we need to do that. So it turns out if you look at single words or portmanteaus of two words, you can fill in this entire table. And this entire table tells you how to go from one letter, like F, to another letter, like N, for example, with the word fan. All right? And in fact, you'll see to pure rack in here, we just used that a second ago. And actually, most of the words in this column end with Iraq. There just aren't that many words in English that end with a Q. And actually, I think this means that in some languages, like Italian, this can't even be done. It's not possible to generate a portmanteau of all of the words in Italian. Here's the rest of that table, and it contains some great words like Xmash. We can use this table to connect together all of those individual portmanteaus into one huge portmanteau of the entire English language. Now that word that comes out is about 600,000 letters long, so let me start showing it to you while we wrap things up. Well, and here it is. This is all 611,821 letters of the portmanteau scrolling by. I made them random colors so that you could kind of see some of the texture, otherwise we'd be here for hours if it was scrolling slowly. In fact, when I published this paper in Sigbovic, at three-point type with really, really, really tight margins, it was 11 pages or something. It's kind of the opposite of what you do when you're in high school and you need to make a paper a certain length. And one more thing, in order to generate this portmanteau, I ran the procedure we talked about 100,000 times or so and just picked the smallest one. You get a different uh, word out each time. It's probably possible to get smaller, but not that much smaller given that there are 100,000 words in the language. And so that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. More interesting or weird stuff soon.